them sounds direct, sounds you can't afford to miss. Saturday on NBC Super Channel. At 7.30 in Ushuaia, we travel to Brazil to witness the amazing relationship between man and dolphins. At 8.30, join Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips for another edition of Dateline. At 9.30, Talking Jazz spotlights the classic sax of Gary Bards and the multicultural music of Trilog Gertu, an artist who blends percussion styles from all corners of the globe. At 10.30, it's The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, whose guests include Melanie Griffith, seven-year-old actor Curtis Williams, and Stevie Wonder. And at 11.30, the second part of our comedy doubleheader, with an hour in the company of the sharpest wit on TV in a late night with Conan O'Brien. Programs for Saturday evening on NBC Super Channel. Having a child. Millions can't because of infertility. But now there are some promising new techniques to help you start a family. What are they? Watch NBC Nightly News Monday. And now we go live to ITN in London for a world news update. Three people have been arrested in South Korea in connection with the gas blast which claimed nearly 100 victims. The three, all employees of a small firm, are suspected of rupturing a pipeline. Today, President Kim Young-sam went to Taegu to see the devastation. After having a look round at the damage, the president went inside to a briefing at the rescue center. While the briefing was underway, construction workers were sifting through the rubble looking for clues to find out what could have caused such a huge blast. They discovered a four-inch hole in the gas line and a larger hole in a nearby sewer pipe. Police say they think the broken water main carried the leaking gas into an underground construction site where it collected until a spark must have ignited it. The temporary road above, made up of heavy metal sheets, was hurled into the air, killing passers-by and smashing buildings. Bosnian Serbs have fired a phosphorus shell into the central Bosnian town of Maglai. One man was seriously injured. The UN says the shelling is the worst incident in Bosnia since the ceasefire began four months ago. And the Croatian president, Franjo Tuđman, has cut short a visit to Switzerland after rebel Serbs murdered at least three Croatian motorists and took five hostage. The incident happened in rebel Kraina Serb territory as the Croats crossed the ceasefire lines. Sri Lankan Tamil rebels have shot down a second Air Force plane in the Jaffna Peninsula. Ninety people have been killed in Tamil missile attacks in the past two days. The Russian army has come under fire in Chechnya despite plans to extend a two-week ceasefire beyond May the 12th. Both sides have arranged to swap wounded soldiers and prisoners of war, but the Chechen commander Aslan Maskhadov has refused to recognize a full ceasefire. I'll be back in an hour with the ITN World News. Now, forecast the world with Joe Witte. Well, look for some sunshine over Western and Central Europe, mixing with a little bit of cloudiness around the Paris area. Paris going up to 12 degrees. Now, that is cooler than normal. Traveling to New York City, bright sunshine, a high of 20 degrees. We'll see Miami warm at 30 degrees, but with that heat, will come a chance of some thunderstorms in the afternoon. Seoul, Korea at 19, and Caracas at 30 degrees. Upper airflow showing a couple of things. Basically, a flow from west to east that pushes storms quickly out and gives us a chance to see some clear skies, but also pushes storm systems in and also gives us a chance of storms developing rather weakly and not the strong storms that we had earlier this week. So flow trying to come in from the south, warming things up, but it's going to take a few days to do that. The dread at 16 degrees is still cooler than normal. There's that little band of showers from Paris across London, across Dublin, that will slowly left to the north during the course of the day on Saturday. Rome, 18 degrees, chance of some lingering showers from the coastal region. Zurich at 11 degrees, we'll see Berlin at 14 degrees, Warsaw at 10 with partly sunny skies. Now, if you're doing some traveling, here's what you can expect. In the States, rain approaching Chicago late in the day with a high of 10 degrees. New York, 20 degrees, Miami at 30 degrees. Denver, 16 degrees, bright sunshine for the Rocky Mountain states. And in Southern California, 21 at Los Angeles. Traveling to the Far East, looks like rain again for Hong Kong at 29 degrees. Tokyo, rather wet and windy, 25 degrees. And we'll see Seoul, Korea beginning to dry out with a high of 19. Looking ahead to Sunday, the second day of the weekend, the last day of the month, we see high pressure still raining over much of Europe. 14 degrees at Paris, real slow to warm up. 16 degrees at London, still lingering showers a possibility. And a little activity moving across the Balkans. 22 degrees showers approaching at Athens by the afternoon. Extended outlook for the first day of the month of May. 
Monte Carlo, today's show, live there. Looks good. Mild and dry conditions for Bryant and also for Katie. And that is my latest forecast. This has been Forecast the World with Joe Witte. What a difference today makes in those first morning hours. Is there sunshine or showers? Only Willard can tell. When you want the news now, Brian's got it for you now. Katie always comes through now with the best tips and tips. watching NBC Super Channel. They call it the race of truth. It's the prologue time trial and it's in Wilmington. It opens the Tour du Pont for 12 days of racing. The top fielder here, Zenon Jaskula of Poland. Jean-Luca Bortolami, the World Cup holder. His teammate is here too, the top sprinter, Adriano Baffi. Lance Armstrong, second for the past two years. Can he win this time out? If he does, he must beat this man, Vyacheslav Yekimov, the defending champ. This was the scene yesterday in Wilmington, Delaware for the 1995 Tour du Pont opening prologue time trial. A shade under three miles. The traditional start of this event in this city since 1990. It's a great course. It goes round the opposite way to the clock, but the riders go up Monkey Hill, and then they twist the way back up into King Street for the finish outside of the city hall. It's a difficult race, but the weather is perfect. And this was the scene yesterday too for Franz Masson. Here now to try and get his Nobel team off to a good start. Alongside me, Davis Finney, who's been through all of this pain personally. This is the major difficulty, Phil, and here's trouble right now with Monkey Hill, Jackie Duran of Castorama. He must need, obviously, a bike change. It's a flat tire. It's a flat tire on the cobbles, David, and this was trouble for Jackie Duran because the last two years he's been the champion of France. That's why he wears the tricolor. A jersey there as the French champion and not a great change either and that's disappointing for him because to this point he had been recording a great time this is such a short event just over six minutes so a loss like that puts you immediately 30 seconds behind well there we are that says everything yesterday now uh, the pressure is off I think for him but other riders who rode extremely well and this is the Nobel rider Franz Masson reaching the finish now. Until this point yesterday, it was the American rider Frankie Andreu who had set the best time at 6 minutes and 12 seconds. But as this man came into view, they knew that time was going to be bettered. A new target time for those who follow to beat. Franz Masson comes up to the line and his time stopped at 6 minutes and 7 seconds. That was a tremendous ride compared with those who had gone before him. But we weren't expecting better times, but they weren't going to come from this man. Igor Chuklantsev, because he had a real problem with his chain. Well, the Ukrainian team has just gotten these bikes with all this new equipment, and they are not familiar with it, Phil. So he's, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to work the mechanics of that shift lever system. And again, it looked as though the mechanics, too, were getting the first day troubles out of the way bright and early in the Tour du Pont, because they weren't too nippy either. In the end, he was underway. 
Well, sort of, anyway. But he couldn't get his feet into the clips this time. He's getting pushed around the course. <laughs> and the rider who started one minute behind him couldn't believe his luck. He had a man in front of him now, and again, the chain was giving him trouble. Well, I can tell you that by the time the, the uh, Ukrainian rider did reach the finish, he would finish last of the 111 riders, and indeed, he would lose more than two minutes. But Ron Kiefel, well, he too had his share of problems as well, and that was a shame because Ron Kiefel, a former champion of the United States, and indeed, a former teammate of Davis. And Ron loves this course. He is terrific at getting up Monkey Hill. And this is the hardest part of the course, coming down the descent. But he's got a flat tire. Oh, boy. You see that, Phil, this year with the exotic wheels that these guys are using. The tire is the weak link here, and obviously those cobblestones are taking it out on them. But a much better change for Ron. And I can tell you, too, that Ron finished in 83rd place, a 6 minutes and 41 seconds. What would he have done? He would have been up near the leaders with this ride, but for that flat tire at this stage of the prologue. Now looking at the face of Adriano Baffi. Better known, I think, throughout the world as a great sprinter and probably infamously known as the man who caused his teammate, uh, as it was a year ago, Cipollini, to have that sensational crash in Europe. Buffy likes the short time trials, but here's Scott Moniger, who has switched teams this year. He's riding for Chevrolet LA Sheriffs, and he has a good chance on this day, excepting, again, he runs into problems, Phil. Well, you can see the tremendous crowd here on Monkey Hill, and that's because the hill, by the way, is adjacent to the Brandywine Zoo here. And now he's slipped his gears and he's come to a screeching halt there. That really is bad luck for Scott. He's been signed by the LA Sheriff Chevrolet team here uh, simply because he climbs so well and they hope that he's going to be a real man to watch out for even this next 10 days, 12 days. But you know, uh, he's losing too much time here and Monica himself will finish only 87th now of the 111 starters yesterday. Yeah, it's no way for your morale when you come into this event to have a problem. Talking of problems, Adriano Baffi at this point had gone up with the best split time so far. And Baffi now on the smoother road has had his problems and it looks like to a puncture for him. A front wheel indeed. Well, it just goes to show you, Phil, the exotic equipment. Uh, Malcolm Elliott, the 1993 British Pro Champion, he's going to make his run. He's a hot favourite. This is the face of the American road race champion, Steve Hay. 4-1, si chiusa.